This worksheet is going to be an introduction to a type of reaction called nucleophilic addition. Nucleophilic addition is a reaction that takes place at a carbonyl carbon, um, such as the carbonyl carbon that would be in an aldehyde or a ketone. Aldehydes and ketones are good electrophiles, and they are subject to nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon. So what does this mean about the carbonyl carbon in terms of its charge? Is it negative or positive? So let's kind of sketch this out. We have our carbonyl group, we have a nucleophile, and from what this problem is telling us, the nucleophile wants to be attacking that carbonyl carbon. Um, so what can we say about the charge? Knowing that the nucleophile is going to attack, what can we say about the charge on the carbonyl carbon? Well, a nucleophile means that it is the lover of a nucleus. This means that it wants to be going after things that are positively charged. Nucleophiles are negatively charged. So the carbonyl carbon, because it's attacked by nucleophiles, it contains a positive charge, either a positive a formal charge or sometimes just a partial positive charge like that. But either way, it is definitely positively charged. So where does that positive charge come from? Well, we can explain the positive charge using resonance. Um, we're going to be using acetone as our example of a ketone. Same would be true for an aldehyde. So here's my Here's my acetone molecule. And when we just look at the acetone molecule, it doesn't look like there's any charge at all on this carbon atom. Like it looks, looks pretty neutral. But we can draw a resonant structure for this molecule where we take the electrons in the double bond and we just delocalize those electrons up onto the oxygen atom. And so if we do that, we've got this carbon oxygen, now it's a single bond. We've got an extra set of electrons up on that oxygen, so the oxygen atom has a negative charge, and then the carbon is now short electrons. It's deficient, so it has a positive charge. We do the exact same thing if we were dealing with an aldehyde, like if we just had a hydrogen out here, it wouldn't make a difference because this resonance is just taking place at the carbonyl carbon. It doesn't matter what's attached to it. We could also explain the, the charge on the carbon atom using electronegativity. Um, using acetone again as our example, if we want to understand why the carbonyl carbon is positive, another way that we could explain that is just by looking at the difference in electronegativity between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom, because this bond is a very polar bond. Oxygen atom is more electronegative than the carbon atom, and this means that the Electrons in the carbon-oxygen bond are drawn or attracted to the oxygen atom. And that like yeah, uneven distribution of electrons between the carbon and oxygen atom results in a partial positive charge on the carbon atom and a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom. So we've got two situations here, a resonance and electronegativity, that are both causing our carbon atom to be uh, either fully or partially positive charged. Now, when we're talking about the nucleophilic uh, addition reaction, aldehydes, we can observe, aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. There are two reasons for this. Number one is just simply steric hindrance. In this reaction, the nucleophilic addition reaction, a nucleophile is going to be attacking the carbonyl carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond. And with, uh, with an aldehyde, we have only one alkyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon. So the carbonyl carbon of an aldehyde is much less crowded. That's a better way of saying this. Aldehydes have only one R group, so they are less sterically hindered. And it is much easier for the nucleophile to attack them. The other reason, which is one that is not quite as easy to remember, alkyl groups are like the opposite of electronegative, even though electropositive isn't a word. Instead of pulling electron density away, Alkyl groups actually dump electron density in. 
So a ketone, because it has two alkyl groups, has got these two groups that are shoving negative charge in to the carbonyl carbon. And um, that causes this positively charged carbonyl carbon to get kind of extra stabilized because we've got two alkyl groups that are dumping electron density in. They are stabilizing that positive charge. If it's stable, that means it's not going to be reactive. Aldehydes have only one alkyl group and a hydrogen atom. So there's only one alkyl group dumping um, electron density in for an aldehyde. So they're not quite as stabilized. So alkyl groups which we have two on a ketone, um, alkyl groups stabilize the positive charge. Carbon aldehydes only have one alkyl group, whereas ketones have two. All right, um, so this nucleophilic addition reaction that we're gonna learn about, it can take place in either acidic or basic conditions. And what we're gonna do in this problem is propose a generic mechanism for nucleophilic addition in a basic condition. We're gonna be using acetone again as our example of uh, ketone. Same type of mechanism if we were doing this with an aldehyde. We're going to just use a generic nuke for our nucleophile. The nucleophile is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. When it attacks the carbonyl carbon, it's going to form a bond between the carbon and the nucleophile. And so this means that we need to get rid of one of the existing bonds on the carbon, and we do that by opening up the carbon-oxygen double bond. So this is going to give us an intermediate, or we have added that nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon. The double bond has been turned into a single bond, and we've got a negative charge on the oxygen because those electrons were moved up onto the oxygen. Uh, in order to make room for the nucleophile. Following up this, we've got a step two situation here with water. Purpose of this is just to protonate that O minus. The product of this reaction is going to be an alcohol. And I'm just gonna randomly convert to line notation. So the product is gonna look like this. There are a variety of different nucleophiles that we can use for this reaction. Uh, either way, the product is gonna be an alcohol. Now, for the reaction under acidic conditions, under acidic conditions, what we're going to look at yet next, we're going to use acetone again as our example. And this reaction actually starts a little bit different. So we've got our um, acid, which I'm going to call H nuke. That's going to be our acid with a positive charge. This is an acid. And as you have learned in the past, anytime you have an oxygen that's in the presence of an acid, the very first thing that should happen is protonation of the oxygen using the acid. So first step of this reaction, we're going to protonate our oxygen using our acid. That's going to break the h nuke bond, and it's going to leave us with just a neutral nucleophile like that. And then what happens next in this reaction kind of depends on your textbook. Um, the nucleophile could attack and open up the carbonyl group like that. And this is the method that I prefer to draw. Gives us the same product as we saw for the other reaction. Uh, another option, another way that this is sometimes drawn is initially just showing that carbon oxygen bond opening itself up like that putting that positive charge down on the carbon, and then the nucleophile coming in and attacking the positively charged carbon. Either way, you get the exact same product. So either you, know, you draw these two curved arrows in one step or you draw the two curved arrows in two steps. It's the exact same curved arrows. Uh, one step or two step, depending on whichever you prefer.